Today on our 2012 Toyota 4Runner, we'll be installing the Firestone Coil Right Air Helper Springs, part number F4135. To give you an idea of the operation of the air helper springs, we're going to add approximately 1,100 pounds of weight to the manufacturer's installed suspension and then run it through our test course. Along the slalom course, you notice the vehicle sag and body roll. Then going over the bumps, you notice the bounce of the body and roll of the vehicle. Now we'll go ahead and repeat the same process with our air helper springs installed. You notice the vehicle sag and body roll. Then going over the bumps, you notice the bounce of the body and roll of the vehicle. Next, we'll go ahead and give you a few measurements. First, with no weight and manufacturer's installed suspension, the vehicle sits at 36 inches from ground to the edge of the wheel well. Then, with the approximate 1,100 pounds, the vehicle body will drop to 33 inches. And with the airbags installed and aired up, with the 1,100 pounds, brings the vehicle back up to 34 and a half inches. Now, let's go ahead and install our airbags. Note, to begin our install, we've already gone ahead and raised the vehicle and removed the rear wheels and spare tire. While it is not a requirement to do this, it makes it much easier to do the install. Now we'll go ahead and start our install by removing the bolts to release the bracket for the emergency brake cables. Once the bolt is removed, we can go ahead and remove the bracket so it'll free up some room for the cable. Keep in mind, we'll repeat the same process on the opposite side. Now with both emergency brake cables loose, we'll move underneath the vehicle and remove the bolt that secures the brake line to the body of the vehicle. Then we'll go over to the passenger side and remove the bolt that secures the bracket for the ABS wiring. Next we'll remove the bolt for the pan hard rod that connects the rod to the differential on the driver's side. Next, we'll move to the lower shock mount. We'll remove the bolt and then use some spray lubricant around the lower shock mount and pry the shock off the lower shock mount. We'll repeat the same process on the opposite side. We'll move to the sway bar where we'll remove it from the rear axle. To do this, we'll remove the four fasteners, two on each side, to secure the sway bar to the rear axle. Now with the bolts out, we'll pull down on the sway bar to release the sway bar from the bracket. Now before we remove the spring, we'll want to put a jack underneath the passenger side, raising the passenger side up, which will force the driver's side down. Next we'll go ahead and mark the spring. We want to mark the spring so that we can get it back in position as it is currently. By forcing the driver's side down, it will allow the spring to come free. You may need to pull down on the axle slightly to allow for enough room to get the spring out. Now with our spring out, we can go ahead and remove the top mount. With the top mount out, we'll remove the four convoluted sections of the top mount. So we'll go ahead and set it in our vise and cut it off now. Now with the cut out, we can see the hole that goes through the top of the mount. This is where our airline will run. Now we'll go ahead and reassemble the spring to reinstall it. We'll take the airbag, put it inside the spring, and then reinstall the mount. Now before we install the spring back into the vehicle, we're gonna go ahead and route the airline. The airline will go through the top spring mount, through the pre-drilled hole. We'll bring the spring back into position, going through the rubber mount, down through the top of the spring, with our spring back into position, and lined up with our marks we made previously. 
I recommend you install the black line protectors provided with the install kit. The line protector will slide over the blue hose to protect the line as it goes to the top of the mount. And once we have the spring back into position, we can route the line into the airbag. When installing it into the airbag, we'll push it in firmly and pull back to seat it in place. We'll lower the jack on the passenger side, moving it over to the driver's side, and repeat the same process. Now with both airbags installed and our springs back into position, we'll go ahead and reinstall the four fasteners, two on each side, to secure the sway bar to the rear axle. We'll go ahead and reinstall the shocks. With both shocks installed and secured, we'll go ahead and reinstall the pan hard rod. In some cases, it will not line up by just pushing it into position. If we take the jack and jack up the passenger side of the differential, it will force the rod into position, we'll slide our bolt back into place and tighten it down. We'll go ahead and reinstall the bolt that secures the bracket for the ABS wiring. We'll go ahead and reinstall the bolt that secures the brake line to the body of the vehicle. We'll go ahead and reinstall the bolts for the emergency brake cables. Now with everything reinstalled, we'll move to the back of the vehicle. We'll make a bracket to mount our inflation valves. Using the Tow Ready Universal Mounting Bracket, part number 18136. To make it easier to get our bracket in position, we'll go ahead and remove the rear bumper cover bolt here on the driver's side. We'll go ahead and put it over the rear bumper beam. Then using a paint marker, we'll go ahead and mark out two holes for our inflation valve and a section that can be cut off. Now, using the step bit process, we'll go ahead and drill a pot hole and then our final size, a 5 16 hole for the inflation valve. Now with both holes drilled out, we'll go ahead and use our cutoff wheel to cut off the excess metal. Now to secure the bracket to the bumper, we'll use a self-tapping screw. Before I install the screw, I'll go ahead and use a bit to make a pilot hole going through the bracket only. Now with our pilot hole in place, we'll go ahead and take the self-threading bolt and secure the bracket directly to the rear bumper beam. Now with our bracket secured, we can go ahead and install the flation valve. First we'll install a flat washer onto the valve and then feed it through the back of the bracket. We'll install a second flat washer onto the valve and secure it with a nut. Then we'll go ahead and tighten it down. And install the cap on the inflation valve. Once we have both inflation valves installed, we'll go ahead and complete routing the airline. We'll cut off any excess from the airline and then install the line into the back of the inflation valve repeating the same process we use in the airbag by pushing it in firmly and pulling out to seat it in place. Next, we'll go ahead and use the zip ties provided with the install kit to secure the line as necessary. Now with our lines routed, secured, and installed, we'll go ahead and cut off the excess from the zip ties to clean up our install look. Next we'll go ahead and air up the airbags. Once they're aired up, we'll use a soap and water solution to spray each one of the connection points to check for leaks. Now that we've verified that our system is sealed up, we're ready to hit the road. That does it for the install of the Firestone Coil Right Air Helper Springs, part number F4135, on our 2012 Toyota 4Runner.